Hello and welcome to the getting started video for trade ideas to the web. So this is going to be for uh, existing users that are using the downloaded version that would like to use the web or people who are new to trade ideas and Mac users like myself and are looking to hop onto the web to use there. We're going to go over how to get started, how to get set up with your own layout, basics of the differences between the two, and then if you want a deeper dive and additional resources, you can do that by going to the other uh, webinars that talk about the downloaded product. There are some differences, not a crazy amount, but there are some differences that you'll need to pay attention to. So to get started, first of all, on our main website, you have trade ideas for the web right here. If you bookmark this page, this page will continuously be the same throughout. When you are opted here, you'll be presented with the ability to sign in. So take your username and password that you were given on sign up. Or if you're okay with working in delayed data mode, you can look at these Facebooks and Google buttons if, you, if you're just trying to give this a shot. But if you are a user, you can come into delayed data mode here, put in your username and password, and then just hit OK. So it's going to present me with a layout here that we're just going to close down. I'll show you how to build your own custom layout for now. But you guys as first time users will probably be presented with just something that looks like this. So this is the trade ideas channel bar. Uh, essentially what this contains is a whole bunch of pre-built channels or pre-built layouts that we've built for you within Trade Ideas that can give you a good way to get started. It can be things that you kind of just rely on yourself. For example, I use this Omni channel pretty much all day, uh, but it's a good way to kind of hop into the system and start playing around and get started. So Essentially, they are different for different types of traders. So for example, in the pre-market, we have a pre-market channel here, and you can bring this up and it will show you kind of what's happening in the early hours, what's gapping up, what's gapping down, you know, things that are moving in the pre-market this after hours right now, so it's a little bit different. What you'll see and what you'll notice is that this whole uh, channel bar is containerized. So that means that if I wanna resize this, I need to go to the bottom corner here and just drag this out and it will expand out. And if I want it to expand back, I can then just drag it back here as well. The other thing that I can do when I'm looking to change this is I can just click on this little maximize window button that would be the same as a Windows program and it will take up kind of the full screen that my browser is. Uh, at this time, right? So we've got this big full screen mode going on here now. I can then just click around, find what channels I'm interested in and populate that. If there is a particular window or a particular scan that I like, I have the ability to pop these out. So you see these little kind of three line uh, menu in the top right hand corner of every window. So if I wanted to take this single stock profile, I could click here and just click pop out. And now this is a free floating window within the trade ideas web that I can move to kind of whatever area I want and resize and to keep that. So that's how you get connected. That's the use of the channel bar here. Um, you can see idea surfing is on so I can either turn that on or off. And essentially what that will do is it will scan for me automatically the top few symbols of every list that you see here. You can go through and you can see automatically it's just changing through the chart. So this is good if you want to keep this on your periphery and then just kind of watch the market from the sidelines while you're doing something else. Next, we are going to talk about the charting. By default, if you click new up here, you'll see this is pretty much every window that you can get to on Trade Ideas web. So here's the channel. So if you want to reopen your channel bar, that's right up here. A new alert window, which will go over top list, multi-strategy, compare count, single stock, chart, and price alerts. By default, here is your chart menu. Currently at this time, we do not have indicators for the charts, but there is some customization that can be done. And let me just go through that now. And just like the downloaded version, 
most menus are activated just by right clicking inside of the body of whatever window you're trying to modify at that time. If I want to change the time frame of that chart, I can go through and just click on a different time frame and you see it update there. I can also use my scroll wheel on my mouse to zoom in and out. If I want to mark up, I can put in a, a trend line through here. Just drag out a trend line if I wanted to mark that up as well. I can right click and I can add it or remove it from symbol lists, which is something we'll talk about uh, down the road. So if under properties is kind of where the meat of the menu is. So if I want to turn on or off the pre or post market, I can do that here. If I want to turn on symbol linking, which is so that I can click on a scan within trade ideas and have it change the chart for me. That's how I would turn that on or off here. I can show the crosshair if I would like. And then there's a different theme, a dark theme for people who prefer darker charts as opposed to lighter ones. So that is the charting. So we are going to then add a few scans and I'm going to show you how to save this as a, a layout just for you. So let's open up an alert window. And this one is breaking out on volume. And let me open a top list as well. And I think this is just relative volume leader. So here's two kind of basic scans. One of this is looking for stocks that are making new highs on, a, on extreme volume. And one of these are just looking at stocks that are uh, up on the day. And actually, let's open a single stock window as well. Here we go. So I've got a little layout here. And let me go through these windows in detail. And let me actually turn this to dark mode. You can see right now when I click on these symbols, the single stock window here is updating, but the chart's not. So let me go and right click and hit properties, symbol linking. Now, when I click on the symbol, you can see that the chart updates alongside the single stock window here. A quick definition of these different windows and how to use them is an alert window or a window with the A in the top corner here is a window that needs an alert to trigger. So what does that mean? That essentially means that you can have the system say, I want to see stocks that hit new high of day. And if you do that, you'll end up getting, you know, tons and tons of symbols, some good volume, some weak volume, some ETFs, some ADRs, anything that's hitting the new high of day. So for there, you can go and filter that down. And again, to modify pretty much anything in trade ideas, right click on the window and hit configure. From here, you can see that we have this tab view up here where we can go through on the first tab, it gives us some pre-existing strategies. So some neutral strategies, some bullish strategies, some bearish strategies. These are, again, things that we have built in just as a, a jumping off point for users. From there, we can go in and modify all of the alerts. So you see access to all of these alerts, and there's a lot to go through, so I, I certainly cannot go through these. But for example, if I wanted, uh, Let's just grab something here at random. So if I wanted a break across above daily highs and resistance, I can do that right here. And if I tick this, it will add this to my particular scan. So these are alerts. These are things that need to trigger, right? It needs to cross above daily highs in order for it to trigger. But I don't want everything that crosses above daily highs. So that's when I go to my filters tab here. And within my filters tab, I can specify things like I did here, like relative volume, which is the amount of volume done today versus the amount of volume done at this time previous days. So here I want it to be doing double normal volume. I want the volume today to be at least 300,000 shares. So I put that in there and then I want a thousand percent normal volume for this one minute candle. 300% uh, normal volume for the, the current five minute candle and the change, change from the close to be greater than 2%. So this is what I've built for this scan. But again, there's many, many, many that you can find here with the alerts. And you can also do this with the filters. You can just use the search bar up top to start searching for whatever you want. I see it right there. But for example, if I just wanted to look at price, I can just type in price right here. And let's say I wanted to make the price between $5 and $200. And that kind of helps 
solidify how we kind of look at things and trade ideas, where we look at everything as what's the min you want to look at and what's the max you want to look at. For example, you don't want to trade stocks over 200, so you'll put the max there. And you don't want to trade stocks under five, so you'll put the min there. If relative volume, if again, if I wanted to cap relative volume to make sure the thing's not doing crazy volume, I could put that there. Next tab is our exchange tab. And this is essentially just what exchanges you want to look at. Here's your normal exchanges. You can take a look at pink sheets uh, if you'd like, and all of these other exchanges here. Symbol lists. So these are lists that you can actually make yourself that you can um, do from the accounts page on our website. And you can take a look and say, okay, well, I want to make a list of stocks for myself and have this scan only tell me when that list is making new high or low for the day. You would find that from the list that we see here, and you would just tick that list if that's exactly what you wanted to see. Next is where you customize the columns. So you can add and remove any column you see here if you would like to know more or less information about the stock. And summary, this is a great tab that just kind of tells you in plain English what it is that you're looking for. And after that, if you click OK, then you have now updated that uh, alert window there. So next is a top list. So a top list, the, the way to think about a top list is basically like a giant Excel spreadsheet that uh, is sorted and filtered out. So for example, this is high relative volume leaders. So what we've done is we've taken all of the market and we filtered it and said, I want to see just the ones that have the highest relative volume right now. So what does the market really care about that's putting out extreme volume? But you see there's a lot of stocks here under two or three. So just like the other one, if I wanted to, go through and change some things. If I wanted to go through and say, okay, I don't want to look at any stocks under $5. I right click in the body of the scan, just like the last one. I go to where it says filters. And then under price, let me put a minimum of five and then again, a maximum of say 200. You can see that this is set up the same way as the other scan. The main difference being this is always going to filter kind of in that spreadsheet style what's at the very top for you. That's why we call it a top list. It does not need an alert or an event to occur in order to reach it. It just needs to meet these criteria of having this amount of volume today between this price range and also having a 0.5 relative volume. But the difference between this one here, because you can see we can do exchanges and symbol lists and columns just like the other one, but the main difference here is that it has this sort. So what do I want to sort this by? You know, it, it, do you want to sort it by price or, or the volume today, however you would like for your trading plan, but this particular one, because it's looking at relative volume, I'm pointing at relative volume and saying, that's the thing that I want to look at. And we hit okay, and we get this summary tab that has this nice kind of plain English explanation of what I'm looking for. And then we hit OK again, and you can see it's a new list, this time with stocks over uh, $5, but less than 200. And we can see BLPH here. So next, we're going to take a look at the single stock window. And this is a single stock window, which essentially just gives you all of the information that you would like to see when it comes to snapshot of that stock at that time. So for example, we have profile here. And we have single stock detail. So this has things like what's the smart stop at the time, what's the float and the short float. To customize this, you just right click in the middle of the window, hit configure, and you can see you can add and remove any column you would like to see. So whatever it is that you want to see at a snapshot when you're looking at a stock, this is a great way to do that. News and another cool feature that will look for stocks that are similar to this one is going to be added very, very soon into the web version. Uh, it may be up by the time you're seeing this video. Beauty of a web version is you don't need to update. You'll just load up a single stock window and you'll see the news right there. And when you click on the news, it will open up another website so that you can read that particular news. Next is how do we save things and how do we save things to the cloud? So there's no save files because this is a web version as opposed to a downloaded version. 
but we can save each of these scans individually so that we can get them later, and we can save an entire layout in a few ways. So first is how do we save these things individually? So say I just wanted to save this uh, new scan that I built of stocks that are breaking out on volume. Again, right click in the window. You can click save and share to cloud, and then save and share. And this link that it gives you, if you ever want to share a scan with a friend, or if you want to share a scan with support, if you're having some problems and you're emailing support, this is the link that you would give. And this is the cloud link that anybody can who has this link can take this and, and open it up. It's a great way to share around and to share tools like that. All right, so let's close this down. Now that it's saved to the cloud, and let's open it back up. So new is where we got all of our different windows that we can open up. Tools is where we're going to access the cloud, where we're going to do things like this symbol list that I spoke about, right? You can edit your symbol list there. It will just take you right to the website. You can also load things from the cloud. So you see breaking out on volume is right there. So I click load and there's my scan right back where I left it. So that's great and you can do that with charts, you can do that with single stock windows, pretty much everything that you see, you can do it within there as well. Now, what if I wanted to save the entire layout? I have my layout set the way I want it. If I wanna save the entire layout, I go to tools and I go save to cloud. And this button here, this is entire layout, I can click on this and then just name it whatever I want. Let's call it name and I will save that. Now, if I want to load that, it's the same thing, tools, load from cloud, and you see name right there, and I'll load that, and all of those windows are right there. Now, what if I really, really liked this layout, and I wanted this layout to be presented to me every time I came to the web version, I didn't really want to mess with the default layouts, uh, I've played with the channel bar, I got some good stuff from that, now I kind of want to go on from there. What I would do is I would take this layout and click save as default layout. Now I'm not gonna do this because it's gonna overwrite my actual layout, but as soon as you save as default layout, something really cool will happen where, let me just refresh this website and I'm gonna sign in here. And you can see my layout is actually already here. So I've actually customized this layout to my liking where it's scanning for certain candlestick patterns that I like and it's, it's um, certain setups that I like and I have the single stock layout laid out the way that I like. It's all here when you click to file and uh, save as favorite. It's kind of the default layout that will pop up every time that you log in. So that's a great way to you know not have to to fiddle with this every time. The other thing that I will say is the beauty of this being containerized, the channel bar, is that I kind of usually have this open as well. I don't have to be looking at it all the time, but I can have this open, you know, maybe up in, up in a corner here. Usually I have a, a bigger, you know, it's more stretched out than this. So I can have this in the background while I'm scanning. If Holly does something interesting, I can click on, on this one here and it will populate both these charts and this chart here. Like Holly had this great trade in BLPH today. It was like a 50% move. So I'm glad I can have these kind of up in the corner of my screen while it is that I'm playing with everything else. Now up above here, you can see our price alert screen. So if I push up here, you can see that we have price alerts at the very top. So these are stocks that I'm interested to look at uh, when they reach certain levels, right? And US, you know, I wanted to see if it broke down under these two candles yesterday and it triggered, and you can see it pops up and says trigger there and tells me how close it is, right? LK, I wanted to see it up over this area, and that happened there as well. So to do that, you can right click in the chart and click create price alert and this box will pop up so it's whether i want it to be a long or a short at what price i want it to activate at what time i would like it to expire if it doesn't reach that area what price i want it to expire so say i want this thing to break 46.22 but 
if it gets to ten dollars then you know the whole thing has changed i'm not interested anymore so i could put you know that i want it to be at ten dollars i want it to invalidate if i want it to go short right right now it will have the price has to rise to 46.22 to initiate a short but if i unclick this then if the price falls to 46.22 then it will be a short and as soon as i click that and click OK, it will pop up in this window. I can do this as well from the price alerts window, which again is found in under new, like all of the windows here. I can just right click and I can create a new price alert or I can edit a price alert. If I want to edit this one, if I want to add a node into it, uh, if I want it to maybe change the price and have it trigger for me again, I can do that. You can see right now it's a short and the price needs to fall to that price to get to it. So if I, for example, click on this and say, oh no, I want it to, I want it to trigger now again at the low of the day, I can either drag this thin green line here or I can go and I can type in a different number there. Now, if you were looking for how an alert did over the last um, you know, few days or even few hours, you can open up an alert we can right click on it here and I'm going to actually walk through the different things that you can do here. So the first is configure and this is how we edit the alert and I showed that earlier. Next is the history. Do we want it in real time? Do I want to see every alert that would have went through today? If I click that, you see every alert that went through here today. If I want to see every alert that happened yesterday, I can click on that. And this will take a second to load, but it will load everything that happened. Oh, Sorry, yesterday was a holiday, so that's why that's not working. And then time frame, I can say how many days ago I would like to go. If I want to go 10 days ago and have it end today, I can do that, and it will, it will give me that as well. So now for the AI. So if you are a premium member, and this is limited to premium uh, members right now, you can load up your AI windows just like you can on the downloaded under new. You can load up an AI window. Here is Holly Grail. Actually, let me clear this out just to make it less cluttered for you guys. And we're going to open up a chart. And remember, the default chart is not linked. So we're going to link this. And we are going to open up a new AI window. And you can see we have a new, these are all the different strategies, but not really the symbols that they were producing. If I right click on this window, I can go to change from filter from inactive to inactive strategies. I can duplicate this. I can change the column or I can change the segments. Let's take a look at NEO today. Only one strategy triggered off in NEO today. And I can see each strategy and how well they worked. So NEO today on breakout long had a 66.7% win rate. And on risk on made a $1.33 per share. So if I want to actually see the trades of that, I can go through and I can click all strategies trades. And let's change this to NEO as well. And here are the three trades that happened today. The two winners and the one loser for our 66% win rate. And I can just click on these and they will update the chart. Let's zoom into a 15 minute chart and show you how it shows on the intraday chart. So the blue area here, 737, shows you where the buy took place. And that's also denoted by kind of the separation between the red and the blue here. This red was the stop, and then this green was what it was looking at for profit. So as long as it's in this green area, this trade is in profit. And if it's in this red area, it's in a loss. And below this area, it gets stopped out. So it makes it quite easy to see, okay, where did Holly call it? We have this little buy tag right here. And, you know, where did it exit? So if I highlight on it, you can see that it has profit of $1.94 a share. It got really, really big there before pulling back. And I was able to see all that just by opening up this particular window. Now, right now, let's bring up 
another alert window. While I'm here, let me go through the rest of these. If I want this to make a sound every time a new symbol comes through, I can click on the actions button and I can play a beep or I can have it alert a window. If I want to clear all the contents, I can do that. I can under select colors, change all of the colors in this. Um, under view mode, I can actually change it so it won't repeat the same symbol all the time if I want. I can duplicate it and I can save it to the cloud. Okay, if you would like to backtest a strategy, we have the ability to go through and run, let's bring up a chart here and relink this. And what we will do is talk about how you can backtest, how you can do that. So essentially what the backtester does is it says, okay, what happens if you took each of the instances of this particular alert and traded them with whatever trading plan that you build? So for example, I'm going to backtest this. I want this particular strategy to wait five minutes after the market open. And you will have to adjust for my time zone, which is an hour more east than eastern. So the market opens at 10.30 for me and closes at five. So I have this saying, okay, I want you to wait five minutes before the market opens. And I really only want to trade the first half hour of the day. So that's why I have a start time and an end time listed here. Next, I want you to hold this strategy until the end of the day, unless the profit target gets hit. You can swing trade this and you can say, I want you to hold uh, a couple days. You can say, I want you to hold at the end of the day, or you can say, I want you to hold just a few minutes from now or an hour from now. And that would just be done right here. Under risk management, I can say risk a dollar. I could say uh, risk 10%. Um, however that ends up happening, I can just change this is what I want you to risk. And under advanced here, you can pick here how long you want the back test to happen for. I would also select use all available columns. This will just give you more information for a step that I'll show you in a, in a second. So if this was a long strategy, you'd click simulate buy, but uh, this one's a short, so let's click simulate sell. And again, what's happening right now is trade ideas is going back through and it's saying, okay, what would happen if you traded every instance of the first time a ticker came through of this strategy that you build? What would happen? And it presents the information for you here. So this one has a 41% uh, accuracy. If I trade 100 shares, the average winner is $221 and the average loser is $82. It has a return on my 50,000 starting equity for the three months that I back tested of 10% and projected it's going to make 50% a year. Again, that's obviously a projection. I can go through and I can click on daily profit. And this tells me the histogram here of this is what a good day looks like. And here's what your bad days look like. And here's your distribution of either of those. You can see how many trades you do in a day. It looks like this one does on average a few and then it can kind of it topped out at about seven here and the drawdown that happened so it looked like at one point it drew down about uh, 2.7 percent of this equity high and that was kind of the highest drawdown that we saw in this particular strategy i can go into the calendar view and i can actually take a look at what happened per day if i click on one of these it opens up and it tells me what the symbols were that were traded and what it is that they looked like. So if I open up this one, this happened on Friday. Um, Roku, I would have made uh, $1,800. So I could always just check, okay, well, what would have happened there? Okay, that makes sense. It would have probably shorted in this area and, and, and that makes sense. And then on B, BTAI, I would have lost money on that. And yeah, it would have shorted here and then it would have, it would have gotten stopped out later in the day there. So that's fine. Now under optimization, we can go through a couple things here. So the first tab tells you based off the dollar value of the stock, how well you did. So stocks between zero and $20, it did great. Uh, after that, it started to perform badly. You can tell by all the color coding and that the win percentage here, average um, winner, the total winner, and the number of trades. You can go through time of day. You can see, okay, under a 10 minute period, what works better. So in the first 
20 minutes, this works great, and it started to kind of fade off after that. I can go through here, and this is why we checked all columns, and I can go through this entire list here of all of these different filters and see how these filters affected my stock. So if I go to 120 minute range, you can see that over 2% in the 120 minute range, things work way better. So let me just click on that. And if I right click here, I can say sit, set minimum value range to $2 for 120 minutes. So I'm gonna add that in. And it's just going to put that number in for me. You can see it just added it right here. And then I can just click OK and I can return to my scan. And then from there, I'll be able to go and retest it now with this kind of new filter intact.